Okay. Good evening. Testing. You can all hear me? Welcome. Thank you all for coming this evening to the first ward and second ward community meeting. I'm council. I'm sorry. What did I say? First ward and fourth ward community meeting. I'm council member Claire Kelly, and with me is um, council member Jonathan Newsma, the fourth ward. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're here this evening to um, hear about the latest iteration of the proposed plan development for 1621 to 1631 Chicago Avenue. And I'd like to give a special thanks to our city planner, Katie Ashball, for all your help with this this evening, as well as our um, planning and zoning manager, Elizabeth Williams, and our interim community development director, um, Sarah, Sarah Flax. Thank you all for all your help with this this evening. I know it was a lot to set this up. Um, so um, what, the way this will run this evening, um, Jeff Michaels, partner of Horizons Development, will give a 15 to 20 minute presentation and after that, we will take comments, we will take questions and answers, and anything I left out, Jonathan? Hopefully we'll wrap up no later than 8.30, so I can see my kids before they go to bed. Okay. Right. okay, well, without further ado, Jeffrey. Thank you all. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Thank you, Alderman Kelly, Alderman Newsma, for hosting us this evening. Um, brief introduction, I'm Jeff Michael, I'm the applicant with Verizon Realty Group. If you don't know me by now, I don't know where you've been, been at this for a little while. And I got Tim Kent, he's our architect with Papa George Haynes, and Graham Grady with Taft Law Firm. So we're here tonight as a precursor to our upcoming uh, public hearing on our revised PD application for the legacy at 1621 Chicago Avenue. Um, as a quick administrative matter, I want to let you know we have a website, LegacyEvanston.com. I encourage you guys to take a look at it. There's a great FAQ section that answers, uh, has answers to a lot of the questions that you guys probably have. So even while I'm up here, some of your questions, if I don't get to it, uh, they're, they're most likely on that site. I want to offer a little bit of history because um, there's been much made about the number of times that we've been at this uh, in terms of an application. While this project has gone through numerous design iterations since its initial introduction back in 2017, the current uh, PD application is our third application. Further, only one application was taken to the city council back in October 2020. With respect to the second application, we appeared there most recently, September 14th of 2022, before the Land Use Commission, uh, but continued the matter prior to a vote based upon the feedback that we received from the commissioners. At the time, our project stood 195 feet tall. It included 180 units and had 18 on-site affordable units. While the overall sentiment uh, of the commissioners was positive and was well-received, uh, the commissioners welcomed redevelopment of the site. They appreciated the need for the new vitality and vibrancy of the downtown area, and they liked design overall. Uh, but the consensus was that the building was simply too tall for the D4 zoning district. So based upon the comments that we received, we went back to the drawing board and made some significant changes to the building. As I said, the previous design stood 30 feet taller than the permissible zoning height, yet only 10 feet taller than what is potentially contemplated in tape measure height by the uh, D4 zoning district. Nevertheless, we redesigned the building to a tape measure height of 165 feet and a zoning height of 145 feet which now meets the limits of the D4 zoning district with a site development allowance. We also received feedback that the project was too dense. Accordingly, we went back and reduced the size of the building. It was originally 180 units. It's now 140 units. That's a reduction of nearly 23% in unit count while maintaining the same number of parking spaces. So our parking ratio is 0.41. Test, test, I'm back. Okay, so the parking ratio has increased because we maintain the same level of parking spaces. We also changed the materials used at the pedestrian level of the building. Concrete to brick masonry. So we changed the uh, materials at the pedestrian level from concrete to brick masonry to make it a warmer feel, better contact. Test, test, test. okay. Okay, so we put the brick at the masonry level to better comport to the surroundings of the building and Evanston at large. 
So with the new design, we have reduced the significance of the site developments also being sought. While we still technically need four site development allowances, one of them is of, of the minimum technical requirements, and I'm going to go through those really quickly so we're all clear on what we need here. The first one pertains to dwelling units. As of right, you could build 54 dwelling units on this site. We are asking for 100 base dwelling units. Because we're putting 10 on-site affordable units, we're, per the code, afforded 40 bonus units that gets us to a total count of 140 units. My mic off again? Okay. So the first site development allowance has to do with the dwelling units. The second is the height, as I discussed already. We're requesting 40 feet of height as permitted by site development allowance guidelines. We're now at the height that city staffers have previously communicated to us that they could support. The third is parking. Can we pause? That's the QR code for things. We'll pass that. So. And then to get to a, we had a visual slide of the site development allowances so you can follow. Uh, right there. Okay. So the first one I mentioned, I can't, I'll go one more, Tim. Okay. So they may not be in the same order that I'm presenting, but the first one was the dwelling units. The second is the height. The third is parking. Uh, 95 parking spaces are required for the residential use after you account for the affordable units. And assuming a most onerous commercial use of a restaurant for the retail space another 23 parking spaces would be required for that so it totals 118. Uh, we're proposing 57 on-site parking with the intention of leasing off-site parking if needed to fill the gap and important also to note is that um, of the 118 spaces required 23 are attributable to a restaurant use we do not know if there'll be a restaurant user in the commercial space it might just be an ordinary retailer in which case less parking space is, is required, but we're erring on the side of caution here. Uh, and just as a footnote, uh, this property is in TOD zone, and there are studies out there showing that TD, uh, TOD located properties have a substantially reduced parking demand to the tune of 50 to 80% of projects that are in non-TOD zones. So then the fourth site development allowance, this is the technical de minimis one I mentioned to you is that we have eight parking spaces that are designed for compact cars. So they're three feet shorter than what is otherwise required for a normal parking lane. So a TOD is a transit oriented development. Um, that's a site that is located in close proximity to um, public transportation, buses, trains. So there are allowances and uh, special leeway given for parking and other aspects of the, of the project. Important to note, we no longer need a site development allowance with regard to the FAR, the floor area ratio, because we reduce the size of the building, we're now within what is allowed in the zoning. I also wanna address a point of contention regarding the alley, because much, much has been made about the condition of the alley and the potential burden that this development will cause on the alley. And I have five points in that regard. First, part of our public benefits offering is to rebuild the alley, 127 linear feet of the alley right behind our property, we've already committed to rebuilding. With respect to the rest of the alley, we're offering to rebuild that and contribute an additional $200,000 towards the rebuild of the rest of the alley, provide that the other adjoining um, property owners also contribute accordingly. Second point, currently there's no alley management plan and no loading dock for the existing building. We're gonna have a well thought out alley management plan that's gonna be strictly enforced. Move-ins and outs will be coordinated by the on-site management so that the loading docks are used and residential move-ins and move-outs do not take place on the alley itself. We're expecting nine to 10 total move-in and move-outs per month. That's not a lot for an alley like this. Additionally, all commercial deliveries will be coordinated with the on-site management around move-ins and move-outs and other vendor deliveries. We would expect that residential deliveries such as the Amazon trucks are still gonna take place at the front of the building but we're gonna have a loading zone at the front of the building. Third, we've performed a traffic study with counts indicating the alley has sufficient capacity to handle this project. While I'm sure that many can offer anecdotal nightmare stories about what takes place in that alley, I've seen it myself. At the end of the day, we have an empirical study 
performed with actual traffic counts and verifiable data that concludes that the alley has sufficient capacity to handle our planned building. Fourth, remember this plan was designed at the encouragement of city staff. The original plan did have a port co-share with deliveries being handled within the boundaries of our own property site and the ingress and egress taking place off the front of the building. However, after lengthy discussions and many meetings with many stakeholders, it was decided that uh, we didn't want to create a conflict point with the protected bike lane. There were valid reasons for that. So the ingress and egress was shifted to the back of the building. So this ultimately ends up being a lesser of two evils option. There is no perfect answer to how you ingress or egress this building. Lastly, it's an alley in a downtown district. It is meant to handle commercial activities. It's not a driveway, it's not a bike path, and it's not a cut through for it or anything else. It's designed for the purposes of loading and unloading for commercial activity, and that is what it will be used for, albeit in a more managed fashion. And from an economic and fiscal impact, this project will generate an estimated $10.3 million in new revenue over 13 years, which has a net present value of close to $7 million in today's dollars. The property taxes alone are expected to increase nine to tenfold. It's about, they're about $100,000 right now. We're thinking once the building's stabilized, they're gonna be about $1.1 million in property taxes. About 80% of that, I think, goes to the city of Evanston or even more. An update on the current tenants there, because that's also been a sensitive point of contention. There's two current tenants over there. Found Restaurant, as many of you know, was there. Their lease was up. They've moved to another location in Evanston and from all accounts are thriving in that new space. And we're also having very productive discussions with La Cocinita and BC Cleaners. And without divulging too much information that's not public, I'm fairly confident that we're going to be relocating them in our, exist our next door building at the Marion. All in all, our currently proposed project is a substantial deviation from what was originally introduced back in 2018, and even substantially different from what was presented just last fall. We're offering a building that comports with all significant zoning guidelines, is being built with a design and of materials that are a product of numerous meetings and comments from stakeholders across the city and multiple levels of interest, and includes a significant on-site contribution towards making a dent in affordable housing crisis in one of Evanston's most desirable areas. This project seeks to do exactly what the IHO encourages and enables developers to do, but we can't deliver and achieve those goals of providing meaningful, affordable housing, especially in one of Evanston's most desirable neighborhoods without incorporating the trade-off between affordable units and some density. We respectfully request that you support this project and voice that support to Alderman Kelly and Alderman Nusma. We encourage you to think boldly about progress in Evanston, about what it takes to support local businesses, what it takes to generate meaningful economic engines, what it takes to create desirable, affordable housing in Evanston. Yes, we've been at this for a long time, perhaps too long. Perhaps we started with a project that did not align with the desires of the community, but here we are now with a project that fits within the contemplated zoning, which contribute, it will contribute greatly to the local economy and is beautiful will dramatically improve this block. It'll complete it and bring much needed class A housing to Evanston's most desirable area. Thank you for your time. And I'm gonna turn the floor back Jim to Alvin Kelly. Uh, do we have more renderings? I didn't see what he was showing. Yeah, obviously the glass structure is the building we're talking about and the building on the, in the photo on the right is the addition to the Marion that we built about four years ago. So this one is, I forget the numbers, but uh, 165 feet pit measure. Correct. And 145 feet for the Correct. And for those of you that don't understand what the distinction, when I say tape measure, it's as if you physically took a tape measure, you're going to measure 165 feet to the very top of that building. From the street, it's going to appear as though it's 155 feet because you can see there's a step back at the very top. And when I talk about the zoning height, the zoning height is 145 feet because per the Evanston uh, zoning code, the there's two floors of, of parking here, which are hidden. Those do not count towards the... Um, Towards the, towards the zoning height. Fifteen stories. Stands about it. Oh, okay. This is the streetscape here, uh, giving an idea of what the 
feel and experience would be at street level. It's our hope that we would find a, a restaurant user so we could activate um, that the frontage there. And I didn't hear the question. Point to them. You're, they're not in here, but they're somewhere around here. There'll be a loading zone in front of the building, probably further past the white car. Oh, got it. Repeat the question. Hello. Thank you. So we'll go ahead with um, questions and comments. And there was just a question about what parking spaces would be eliminated. Um, and I'm not sure if we... So this site plan shows the proposed uh, loading zone in front of the building here. I think it's going to replace three parking spaces. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pass around the mic here for question. Thank you. Um, you're asking for 140 units, is that correct? 140. Of those are for affordable housing 10. okay so you want to put a dent in the affordable housing crisis in one of evanston's best neighborhood but you only are going to commit to seven percent of your building being affordable housing the way that the zoning code works is we're doing the it's 10 percent that's question. required I'm, I'm not going to say we're, okay thank you okay um hi I, so I notice at 15 stories that the building is almost twice the height of the existing Marion, which is an eight-story building. It's That's a nine-story building. Nine building, the addition. Yes. Um, regardless of whether you're um, on the street or in a helicopter, people who are behind the building still get the effect of a 15-story building. At a 14-story building, and I think we talked. I think we talked. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I think we spoke last time about the fact that this is a D4 step-down district in which there are supposed to be a transition between business and residential, and and this is twice almost the height of the other business use that is already on the on the block so i don't think we've we've really accomplished much well, since I, I i know obviously you've been madly at work but i mean i respectfully disagree with that i don't think the um comparing it to the marion next door is necessarily the the test excuse me go ahead go ahead um as i indicated is a D4, as you astutely noted, it's a transition zone. At this point, we're meeting the zoning guidelines in that transition zone. The building is 145 feet, and that's what that zoning allows. The zoning height is 145 feet. Without any? With the developer allowance. With a planned development, but not, not any building in a D4 step down zone. No, any building in a D4 would be able to be built to this height. Higher, 185 feet. Not true. That is true. Before. Yes, Bob, Bob. Well, yes, obviously it has to be approved. Any development has to be approved. But the D4 zoning allows the D4 zoning allows for a 185 foot tall building with the site development allowances. No, it doesn't. Okay. With parking, it does. No, it doesn't. It has to get approval by the city council because it requires with, with, with it requires variances with approval. Right. It's not as of right. But a building could be built on this site to 145 feet tall, as of right. A building could be built on that site that's 200 stories tall if it's 180 of parking, based on our crazy bonuses. So that's not true. No, that's not, that's true. not true. I have a I have a question or a clarification. I'll have some questions later. But Bob, in all fairness, state what's true. They don't don't. I'm asking you to do the same. So here's a perfect example. You characterize the outcome of the 9-14-22 meeting with the LUC as a continuance. Yeah. That's untrue. Let me read you what happened. This is straight from the uh, minutes of the meeting. A motion to recommend approval of the special use permit for a planned development 
with the associated site development allowances with the following conditions. And there were nine conditions imposed fail by a unanimous vote of zero to seven with two absent. So it I was not corrected. continued. You're correct. You didn't take it was a unanimous vote. rejection of yeah, I stand the corrected. proposal. You're, you're absolutely right. And so this sort of mischaracterization, embellishment is a real concern because we have a Bob, very I'm telling you right now, you were correct because we, we contemplated that evening not taking a vote. I forgot we did take a vote. It was unanimous, zero to nine. Let's move on. Okay. The point zero is that seven. it's a complicated issue. It's not just about that one comment. It's about bringing clarity and understanding to the discussion. Okay. What do you not understand about this? Let's, it's let's have pretty it out clear. Uh, it's pretty clear to me that it is completely inconsistent still with the intent of the zoning on the east side of Chicago Avenue, which is for it to be actually consistent with the height of the existing Marion. Marion Again, I, the, I respectfully disagree. I'm never going to convince you. So no, let's just agree to disagree. Well, no, I'm not going to agree to disagree because it's in writing. If you look in the Evanston downtown plan, it is crystal clear. In fact, I can show you a table that shows six to 10 stories, no more than 110 feet in height. And it is specifically because of the reasons this woman brought up a moment ago, which is there are residential units, no more than three or four stories at most on the backside, condos, apartment buildings, and homes. And this side of Chicago- If you want to show me which zoning code you are reading, I'd be happy to look at it. Okay, we've been at this- Can I finish years. to quote someone? We're, it's not going to resolve it. All right. I, I want to make it. I've made my point. I've made my point. Nope. I've made my point. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'm sure we'll talk again at the LUC meeting. Feel free Thank to you. send me whatever code you're reading. I think the statistic, the statistic that concerns me most is the 140 units. The basic zoning is 54. This is almost three times the basic zoning. It's much bigger. And I feel like with these proposals, it's as if, suppose you knew something was worth $100. And somebody said, well, you can have this for 300. And we say, no, that's too much. Well, you can have it for 250. No, that's still too much. Well, how about 200? I'm really breaking my ass here to give you what you want. It's too big still. By any, it's not a little bump up to of the zoning. It's not a, a concession of a little bit to the zoning. It's a, an egregious near tripling of the number of units permitted by the basic zoning. So either the city means what it says when it does zoning or it doesn't. And if it's possible to game the system so that something much bigger than what is envisioned for the neighborhood can be built, then we need to change the way we do business because that's not sure. that's not. Okay. What's your first name? My name is Paul. Paul, um, I don't think it's a matter of gaming the system. We're doing exactly what, like I said in my prepared remarks, we're doing exactly what the zoning code encourages us to do because we're putting ten on-site affordable units. The zoning code affords you four bonus units no, for I each on-site unit. That. That's I how the numbers get to where I they guess are. I a question of procedure that permits that enormous expansion over what the basic zoning uh, that's 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 my main point all right I think if you would go over something um sorry would you go over something i was in the car driving trying to hear the buy right units are 54 and you said you were asking for 100 is that right 100, yeah, 100 base zoning units, but total right. 140, yes. Right. And so what is, how did you get from 54 to 100? That's the yeah, point. That's it's not, we know and how you got from 100 to 140. That's fine. But how'd you get from 54 to 100? How do we get from 54 to 100? The buy right units are 54 and you're asking for 100. So 54, you're, it requires 10% on-site units. So 10%, uh, no, is that how we, no, no. or it's 20%. No, that, that comes in later when you're asking for 100, 10% on site gives you 140. But the point is, how'd you get from 54 to 100 in the first place? We got from 54 to 100 by 
uh, 54 to 100 was just the desired number of units that the developer wanted to include on the site. That you're asking for. That we're asking but, for. But it is outside the zoning requirements. That's that correct. And that's why it's a development allowance. Uh, and the site development allowance allows you to ask for it. Aren't you exceeding? I can't remember what the site development allowance allows you to ask for, even. Uh, but not almost twice as much. I don't think there's a limit on the number of units that you can ask for. There, there is in terms of height, and there are other height, things yeah. that are that are limited. But the there's a units. there's a limit as to the allowable site development allowance. I at home I would have this information at my fingertips, but I couldn't get it on the Zoom from home. And I don't have that information here, but there's a site development allowance, and it's certainly not twice as much. Yeah, I don't think there's a limit on number of units. There's not a limit on how much you can ask, but there is an allowable site development allowance, and you can ask to exceed that. My feeling is you're exceeding the site development there, allowance. There, there, are two, there are two metrics. There's the number of units, but there's also FAR or the area, the volume of the building. I know that. I'm also I'm only talking about the number of units. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So I have a feeling that you must be exceeding the maximum site development allowance that you can ask for. You must be going from 54 to 100. I know how you got from 100 to 140. So to say that you're within the zoning is is misleading. That's all. Well, it's simply not true because we submitted a zoning analysis application and your comment is just simply never raised. So let's know better than the city planner that what you're stating is simply not true. I don't know what else. I have the entire response here. But it's not fair. It's not just to say that it's within the zone. You're asking for what you say to me for 100. And that's the issue. If you, so you missed my remark. Sorry, you were traveling. I said we're asking for four site development allowances. Mr. Michael, you're, you're, you need a mic. Yeah. Uh, With the site development allowance that I enumerated, you weren't here. I'm sorry you weren't here. I went through all of them. Okay, so then, okay. Well, unless they were sleeping, they, they heard, I went through the four site development allowances, so I outlined them. Katie, uh, can you add some color commentary here, perhaps? All right. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Katie Ashball, planner in the planning and zoning division. Um, there are two maximum development allowances in the code pertaining to floor area ratio and height, and then any other deviation or item that they are not meeting the code that is also a site development allowance, but there's not a maximum. So they can, they're, they're allowed to request a maximum floor area ratio and a maximum height in the D4 district, but there is no limit on the number of dwelling units or the parking threshold, for example. So to, just to clarify. Okay, thank, thank you for that clarification. But the point is then now that they are asking for 100 uh, when 54 is by right. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Comments? The 10 affordable housing units, um, what is the area medium income that you're using to calculate that? 60%. Okay. Um, so I just want to make a statement. You know, our IHO that you're using it for, um, it's, it's, it's weak and it needs to be revised. I mean, we should be asking for 10 or even 15% uh, given the great need for housing here in Evanston. Um, Evanston has uh, an unmet need for affordable using units for families of four to five. So um, Everson families and children are struggling to find housing for the appropriate size at, and at rent of 30 to 50% AMI. And that should be a starting point. We need affordable housing units here in Evanston that are affordable into perpetuity. And Evanston's overall trend of becoming increasingly um, luxury is alienating our low, in low income families seniors and people with disabilities and luxury housing only displaces um, promotes displacement and we really need council to um, take control of the downtown development and make sure that it confirms the needs of our community that's all I have. thank you um, thank you very much other okay Thank you. 
Pastor Grace, we, we, um, I just have one question. We've done this for so long. Um, Reverend Gracie Matthew, First United Methodist Church, senior pastor. Just wondered if you keep bumping on zoning. I mean, we've been doing this a long time since I've been here in Evanston. Why don't, why don't you work on changing the zoning? Uh, because you keep bumping on that there's a zoning problem. So I'm trying to learn why you haven't worked on changing the zoning on this. I don't even know how to answer that question. We're not interested in changing the zoning. We've come with a project that complies with the zoning now with the site development allowances. So we're working within the, the existing zoning code. But I'm not interested in changing zoning. Oh, so for you, you see as though you met the zoning requirements from this? I'm, this has I'm, been asked and answered. I mean, we're wasting time here. We, we're meeting the so zoning requirements with four site development allowances. Okay. Hey, I don't know how else to answer the question, but asked five times. Okay. We're meeting the zoning with four site development allowances. I, I don't know what else to say. So as far as you're concerned, you're meeting the zoning. You, for me, it's not, but for you, it sounds- I can't help your interpretation of the zoning. Okay, thank you. Hi, Reverend, thank you. Um, Graham, Graham Grady, I'm a zoning attorney. I'll try, I'll try to explain it another way, but I wanna apologize in advance if I don't explain it the right way. It's not an intention to foul things or obfuscate it. So when Jeff says that he's meeting the zoning with four development allowances, I think what he means is the city council has established a system where it can approve discretionary, approve or not approve the development allowance. So this is a horrible example, but it's what comes to mind. If you're on an airplane, you can upgrade the business class, okay? So we're on the airplane, we wanna upgrade the business class. And that's, that's the poor development allowances. Sorry, forgive the, the, the poor analogy. But it's discretionary on the part of the city council, but we have a right to apply for them. And the poor development allowances that we're applying for are squarely allowed in the zoning ordinance for us to apply for. Okay? Well, so, thank you. First class. <laughs> Right. right. Thank you. And there's no first class on the plane. Right. I'm not going to touch that on okay. <laughs> But I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing some levity, right. to, levity to it. I hope I don't wreck this plane. Thank you. Um, I was just reminded that there are a number of folks who had planned, planned comments and remarks, and I agreed acquiesced to have these at the end rather than at the beginning. So I'd like to ask those folks who do have planned remarks if you'd like to make those now. Um, we also agreed right to do this in person also to accommodate um, the request of the Michaels. Um, so any planned comments? Thank you, Alderman Kelly. My name is William Brown. I'm the chair of the board of trustees at First United Methodist Church. And along with our senior pastor, Grace and Matthew, I'm speaking to you tonight on behalf of the entire church congregation in objection to the planned 15 story building at 621 631 Chicago Avenue. Through many previous committee hearings, objections to this building have been nearly universal, with a very few exceptions in support of it. So this evening, I express continued concern and observe that the city staff specifically has suggested to Horizon Realty in previous reports that an eight to 10 story building would be appropriate height. They continued to disregard the ample input of the public and return tonight with a 15 story building. It is just that their new plan to lower the building height from 18 to 15 stories is a meaningful compromise is disingenuous. When the zoning regulations state that the base height not exceed 10 stories, that would be appropriate to recommend. It seems that Horizon Realty is employing a tactic of attrition in their repeated efforts to seek approval of a plan that is inappropriate for the site 
enough. City Council needs to rule once and for all that a building taller than 10 stories will never be approved. Until then, objective, objections from interested parties will persist. Thank you. Okay, are there any, would anybody else like to read? I statement, I guess, then well, maybe some questions. Uh, Pardon? Close. Oh. What are you supposed to do to the mic? There's some saying, eat the mic or something like that. Huh? Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure why we're here. Um, I'm not sure why you're here with this development. Um, I don't quite get it. I mean, you're a developer, right? Um, you're an owner. Um, you know what that property is. I don't know if you've done it, if that's an option or if you actually own it, but if you actually own it, you bought it. And if you bought it, you probably did some due diligence as to what the zoning on that property was. And if you're an astute developer, you would do that. And why you would come to the city with a project that is so wacko compared to the zoning that's available on you, you have no expectation to be able to build what you're offering here. None whatsoever. So you just paid too much for the property. Yes, and it's not the city's responsibility or our responsibility to make your project profitable. You came into that project with known zoning you, and, and you can expect to build something there, not that. You're way out of line. So I just don't get it. I just, I'm sorry, I, just, I, I don't understand why you come in here thinking that we're gonna make your project profitable. It's not our responsibility. It's not the city's responsibility. Thank you. Uh, my name is Craig Williams, and I'm just a trombone player and an artist. Um, so I don't have a lot of uh, interest in zoning, uh, except to see if the truth is being told and the law is being followed. But what I would like to bring attention to is a quality of life issue, which I seem to rarely hear people talk about. Um, but I'm grateful when people do, and I'll try. Uh, there are three issues. I've been here for 40 years, and I've seen Evanston grow increasingly dark due to the height of mass and the mass of the buildings built in the last 40 years. I've seen incredible increase in traffic as a biker. It's getting really dangerous just to be out on the streets. Sir, we can barely hear you. Sorry. Um, and the third thing is the wind tunnel effect, because I'm getting tired of being blown all over the place, walking and biking. I cycle all year round, and it's almost impossible to cycle in the winter now. I realize those are not concerns of many people, um, but they are someone like me who also the affordability issue, 100 people, 150 living in this building. How many of us can afford that? I think probably not many in this room. Uh, that was pretty unplanned, so thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. I am personally acquainted with people who have been knocked off their feet by the wind walking on Chicago Avenue when they pass the, uh, when they move from Whole Foods down to where uh, Pete's Cafe is, because there's that big 18, 19 story building there and a huge wind tunnel on either side of it. And elderly people can literally be knocked down on a windy day by that. It's dangerous. Again, I, I just want to remind everyone that the sense of the last meeting we had with the Land Use Committee was that this was a D4 step down neighborhood which allowed eight to 10 story buildings, period. And it was, and the Land Use Commission uh, did not say, oh, well, we might consider it if it's 15 or 16. They said they agreed with the point that the neighbors were making, which is that the city plan calls for D4, 
zoning to be to to limit its buildings to eight to ten stories because it is a transitional area between residential and business. And that's where we left it last time. There were also some comments about the business practices of HRG, but we weren't allowed to speak about that. I think we all knew know about what they are. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just make, my name is Bob Fretcher. I think many of you know me already. I apologize. I'm not going to make lengthy comments here. But um, as you all know, I think I'm adamantly opposed to this particular development. I think it is completely not in keeping with both the letter and the intent of the zoning for that side of Chicago Avenue, which is, in fact, the D4 transition zone is intended to be a step down. And the intent is for buildings on that side of Chicago Avenue in that block to be no more than eight to 10 stories in height. Period, end of story. Unfortunately, um, and I thought uh, Graham actually did a pretty good job of explaining it. There are these very weird machinations and calculations are associated with bonuses that you get this and that for the other thing. And it's frankly a real perversion of our zoning and it's a perversion of our affordable housing efforts. And we shouldn't kind of acquiesce because it's complicated, because it's complex. The bottom line is this building at this height and this density doesn't belong on that side of Chicago Avenue, period, end of story. And we're very much in support of affordable housing, but this isn't the way to get at affordable housing in my, in my point of view. And so I'm sure I'll have an opportunity at a future date to go into more detail about why I believe the way I do, but I wanted to make it crystal clear that I think there is a perversion occurring because this is a complex calculation that I don't think was ever intended to allow this building to be built on the east side of Chicago. We have some online questions now. So uh, Jeff, one of you guys can grab a mic and we'll just, we'll spin through these really quick. Uh, starting with uh, Lori, do you still have the entrance to the parking by making a turn through the bike lane? I think you mentioned that, but if you could. Yeah, no, that was one of the earlier iterations. So there is no entrance traversing the bike lane. Everything's taking place at the rear of the building from the alley. Great. Uh, next question from Bill Schneider. What does HRG intend to offer to current Marion residents for the significant inconvenience they will incur during this construction project? There's, there's nothing on the table. We take very good care of our Marion residents. Um, I, I'm not going to address that question or even. Okay. Uh, the next one is related. Uh, additional testimony is from current Marion residents. Marion residents are Evanston residents and are welcome to participate in this process. So I yeah, would sure. that way. Yeah. Um, current retention rate of Marion residents, uh, is that relevant? I, didn't come from, I don't know the relevance, but it's okay. fairly high. Uh, and how did you get to the nine to 10 move in, move outs per month? There's gonna be 140 units, industry average and our portfolio average. We turn over about 45% of the units um, a year, so. Half of those move in, half of those move out. That's the math comes out. Is there any difference as a new building, folks would be moving in kind of all at once? Oh, at the beginning, yeah. you have a lot of move-ins when you stabilize the building. Well, I'm talking about once the building stabilized, you're going to experience nine to 10 move in and move out. And how long would it take to stabilize? Uh, we're estimating about 15 months. Okay. Uh, where did found restaurant relocated? Found is now uh, Latour in the Chase Bank Rotunda. Uh, everybody go there uh, or to any other restaurant downtown and spend a lot of money because we could use it. Thank you. Uh, there's currently an abundance of retail space in downtown Evanston. Do we need more retail space? Well, I think what you need is you need people, you need density to patron your retail spaces. If you don't have the density, then you can't support those businesses. And that's what we're offering here. We also need 
uh, downtown office workers. Uh, that is really what's hurting downtown. When we have like 30% of pre-COVID numbers uh, going out to restaurants downtown. So, all right, let's run through the, I, Bill and Amy Timberlake's question. Are, is there another one below that or is that the last one? Uh, a comment after listening to the proposal this evening, we remain opposed to any building that is higher than the eight to 10 story, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, one more question in the room here. Hi, can everybody hear me? Great. How are you doing, Jeff? Uh, so I have some questions for you. Uh, are you going to submit a, an adjusted pro forma so we can look at the numbers? And uh, if you're not going to, if you have the numbers right here, great. Uh, can you talk about the vacancy loss so we can understand what the net operating income is for the building and how the taxes based on that might be calculated? Uh, my other question is um, based on the location and size of the units. Um, it's reasonable to assume that at least some of those units will be occupied by Northwestern students or Northwestern graduate students uh, who can, if they can afford that tuition, can probably afford the rents that are listed in the documents online. So uh, since they're seasonal and not year round, that's what the vacancy loss uh, that's where the vacancy loss question comes in. And have you considered that in your assumptions and your uh, mixed use, uh, the downstairs business area where you have a restaurant and the uh, documents and other things. Please talk about what other business ideas you have for those places in the event you cannot get a restaurant to come in. Coffee shops, some kind of high-end or low-end, I don't know, 7-Eleven, whatever. Do you have any ideas? Because I did not see those in any of your marketing studies or mar other marketing materials. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try to remember all those questions. Yep. Probably go in reverse order. As far as the retail goes, obviously we're going to market this to to the market, um, and whoever responds, um, we're going to entertain anybody that's interested in that space. We're going to build it out in such a manner that will be inviting for a restaurant user because we want to activate that first floor. Uh, by having an outdoor cafe and really inviting the outside environment with the building and sort of making it one and making it a, a destination point. But ultimately, whoever um, steps forward and wants to open a business there, we're going to look at any offer we have. Now, I should say any offer. I'm not interested in putting a cigarette shop there or a cell phone store there or something like that. We want to do something that's going to enhance the building and be an amenity to the building. We're very selective in the tenants that we take. I think. Uh, is evident by our building next door at the Marion. Um, they're all local businesses. They're good businesses. They're all businesses that are an amenity to that block. So we're very selective what we want over there. But at the end of the day, we want something that's going to activate that space and, and really be a plus. It would be unfortunate just to have like a bank there or something like that. Um, one of your other questions is vacancy. Uh, we underwrite at a 5% vacancy. Your comment regarding Northwestern students, probably, I'm not going to lie to you and say there wouldn't be any Northwestern students there. They, they might be attracted to the the studio apartments uh, as they're gonna be smaller, but this is gonna be a market rate apartment where you, the studios will be smaller. So um, it's gonna be a market rate apartment open to the market at large. Um, we're gonna get everything. We're expecting that we'll get some empty nesters. Uh, we're expecting that we'll get some couples there. So I, I wouldn't say that it's gonna be, it's certainly not gonna be a, a, a student building because it's gonna be probably a little out of their budget in terms of what students are accustomed to paying for rent. but to answer your question, the, the seasonal vacancy, we do require 12 month leases irrespective of whether it's a student um, or not. I can't remember, oh, you asked me if I brought underwriting. We have underwriting for this, we didn't bring it with, but we, based on that underwriting, we prepared our fiscal and economic impact report where I cited some of the statistics and I think that's part of the public record. Uh, is that correct? Okay, what, so you're free that to- document? Because it wasn't on the um, materials for tonight, unless you're including that in the- Oh, no, oh. The, our fiscal and economic impact. Yeah, the report. pro forma, man. The the real part of the project is the number. No, not the pro. We don't share the pro forma. You're not going to share not, the pro forma. It's not customary that you would share know, pro forma with underwriting. I just thought we'd ask um, on the off chance you might want to share it. No, um, but the yeah. the fiscal and economic uh, impact report is available, which is based on our underwriting. And it, will that be adjusted based on you know all the other adjustments we you've made to the building? Oh, of course, it's continuously date. adjusted based on you know what the building ultimately becomes. 
we're constantly looking at it. We're looking at it based on market conditions. We update our market feasibility report um, to indicate new rent levels, vacancy, absorption, all that good stuff. We're constantly looking at the numbers. All righty. Good questions. Another question here. Pastor Grace, uh, First United Methodist Church. Just from where I'm sitting, my perch is, um, this is not going to go through. So I'm wondering, what will it take for you to abandon this? I'm just, I just, I just see my life being about coming to these meetings forever and ever. And, and so I'm just wondering, what will it take for you to abandon this? The short answer is I'm not going to abandon this. Okay, we're ultimately going to come to a consensus with the city. I I feel badly about your sentiments here. I do, um, and again, I, I say this with with the utmost respect. I disagree with your guys' interpretation of the code, and ultimately, it's going to come down to the land use commission. We are complying with the code, whether you like the code or don't like the code. That's a whole nother issue for another day. Um, you know, Bob's suggestion that this is a perverse like abuse of the code it's, it's it's just simply not it's written there it's in black and white it's not we're not doing any magic with the numbers um it, this is vetted by the city staff i don't know how else to answer that uh this was clearly contemplated by your code you may not like it but it is and i sleep well at night understanding and knowing that full well this this part of the block was not for an eight to ten story building it wasn't read the code i encourage you to do so read the code then come back to me we could debate it I've been reading the code for four years, and I'm Bob, I'm happy to look at what you've looked at. I, I respect your, your opinion. I'd be happy to sit and, and look what you're looking at. Hi, I'm probably the only one here that supports you, but you. Um, I, I am also a real estate agent, and I appreciate what you're doing at the Marion with the seniors, and um, thank you. And, and I have a lot, many um, clients that have gone to the Marion, so thank you for that. Um, can you tell me, and thank you for doing the affordable housing. We appreciate that. Can you tell me um, what the rents are going to be? Do you know yet or you don't know yet? Approximately. I'm going off memory. The studio is going to be about $1,900. The one bedroom is about $2,400. And the two bedrooms are about $2,900. So there'll be one, two, oh, there are going to be three bedrooms? No, studios, ones and twos. Studios, one and two. Okay, yeah. thank you. The rents. So we're required by the code to match the unit types of the affordable units to the overall profile of the building. So if, for example, 10% of the entire building is one bedrooms, then 10% of our affordable units will also be one bedrooms. And as I indicated, they're all going to be rented at the 60% AMI. Those will rent for, I don't have the chart in front of me, but it's about $1,000 um, for those units, which is very affordable and they'll be identical units. One one response off of what Bruce very uh, eloquently put, it, it would seem, Jeff, that you point to things that could be approved if the city council had a mind, but but do all observe the tone deafness to our concern. Please, please. And, and, and so know that that's what we think, Jeff. Uh, you can speak about what's allowed. You can offer the comments that you do. You are not listening to us about what the community Bill, wants. Bill, you do not represent it. the entire community, and I have plenty of supporters. We have document supporters that outnumber the people that are in this room by far. They're not at this meeting. They? They're not at this meeting. I'll bring the list. I will bring the list. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm here to get some knowledge about this. I don't know much about it, but I feel bad because I feel like you're being attacked by a lot of people. And maybe I'm late to the game, but I feel like we could negotiate politely. When has the world turned into everything is very aggressive? And there's, I just feel like we should listen to you. We should, you know, give our opinion. But I'm kind of turned off by how negative and how, how mean spirited some of this is. And I didn't think this was what Evanston is about. I live at 1629 Judson. I live right behind where you're going to build this building. And I live in a historical register house. And I'm here to gain some knowledge. And I just don't like the tone of a lot of this. 
it just I, uh, I sincerely appreciate those comments and, and i've never met you before but just so you know we also own the marion next door so to a certain degree we put our money where our mark where our mouth is we have a significant investment in this city we took an old senior home that literally should have been torn down and put our own money into it, $40 million of our own money and completely revamped the Marion. It looks like the Four Seasons Hotel. And you ask about the seniors and what are we doing for the seniors? Our seniors living there love the Marion and they love us because they know what we're about. We're a family owned and operated company. We put our blood, sweat and tears into that building next door, just like we're gonna do in this legacy. So thank you. Sure, and then I'll, if you wanna make a comment, then we're gonna to go to questions online. Uh, just want to put on record that we do have a petition of over 800 people who are against this development. Sorry, can you hear me? I have submitted it to all council members, have not heard back from most of you. Yep. Um, we have a petition of over 800 Evanston residents who are against, against this proposed development. And I have submitted this to city council. Again, have not heard back from most of you. Thank you, Claire, for responding. Uh, but I just wanted to put that on record. Let's also put on the record that we reached out to you individually no, to I meet with you and you didn't answer our responses. So it wasn't me. We have um, a, a question online from Laura Crane. That, uh, Hi there. Yep. Hi. Um, have not been involved in previous conversations. Um, so this is my first entree to the building. Um, I wanted to say sort of from a somewhat outsider perspective, um, coming into this fresh, I think, um, I may not be as opposed to, um, high rise buildings, um, more density, things like that. I want to be sure that sort of true to Evanston's values were, you know, focused on density where it's needed in order to drive affordable housing. Um, to me, um, not knowing the codes, um, it, it does seem like if you were to increase the ratio of affordable housing, um, not just to what code specifies, um, but potentially you know, decreasing your profit, um, that could be somewhat more palatable to the community, but I think we have to see what the trade-off is. Um, and that high density right now isn't driving a big value, but if it did drive more affordable housing, that might be more acceptable. Laura, that's a great comment. Um, our previous iteration actually had 18 affordable housing units and five of them went above and beyond what the code minimum was. But uh, because of the objection that we got to the height and the, the density of the building, we had to reduce the size of the building. Unfortunately, the, the five extra units became collateral damage um, when we went to redesign that building. The numbers just simply do not work uh, as you increase the number of affordable housing units, especially in this area where the cost of construction is extremely high and the cost of land is very high. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? One more online hand raise. Bill Schneider. Bill Schneider. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So I have a question. How does Horizon Realty Group respond to the information request from it was the union that represented uh, many of the employees at the Marion that they inherited. Uh, it was 450 Unite Here. Um, it was uh, the form formerly the North Shore Retirement Hotel. Since we're talking about community involvement here. So they filed a complaint uh, with the National Labor Relations Board back in May of 2013. After reviewing the complaint, which asserted that Horizon refused to bargain in good faith, refused to furnish information, and they implemented unilateral changes, I just kind of want to know what their response is. Because even after that whole scenario unplayed, uh, even, even after being ordered by the NLRB to comply, Horizon did not sign a collective bargaining agreement until uh, 2019. And the industry labor contract standards were for three years. And what did Horizon do? They signed a one-year agreement. So I just want to know, how are they as far as, you know, a community? <laughs> are they good for our community? 
Thank you. I mean, I'm not obviously going to address the specifics of, I don't even know what he's referring to. I, we did have a union at that building many years ago. Uh, as far as our we good community, I've mentioned the Marion next door. I've mentioned what we've done there. Uh, this gentleman, if you'd like to meet with me, I'd give him a personal tour of the Marion to see uh, what we've done there. My company employs over 100 people. Um, we're family owned and operated. I haven't taken a cent in terms of public funding on any project I've ever done. Um, all we do is go and renovate old, dilapidated, neglected buildings and replenish them with our own capital. So uh, I, I, you know, in terms of are we good for the community? Absolutely. Uh, we've already put our money where our mouth is in Evanston. I was hoping not to have to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up and you're not going to like it. We do good research around here. We have a lot of people who know how to do that. We have the Duke Crane's business articles about your practices with your tenants and their suit against you, which you lost. We have the 140. Listen, Paul, I'm not going to stand up here and, and take this. Well, you, I, come on. No, 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 no. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. If you want to know about this. No, this has nothing to do with the project. This is brought up at the Land Use Commission. It was brought up the Land Use Commission also. No, because it's completely disparaging and has nothing to do. It has not. If you want, if you want, this I'd be more than happy. not gaining any public trust, I assure you. Okay. I, no, but a lot of people here don't know. This isn't the Land Use Commission. This is a community meeting. And people have a right to know about this. We you also speak have- facts speak facts. We also know about the bankruptcy trustees lawsuit against you which has been dragging on for years those things are only allegations but they're pretty concerning allegations as far as a lot of us are concerned that's a red flag so um with that i think there one more comment Two more comments i just wanted to finish on something you know you this is the third time you've been before us um, you who's reject us? Who, who is us? Don't, don't interrupt me, please. I want to. I, I did interrupt you. Who are you? Please, to? please. The third time you've been before us, you've been rejected the last time by a unanimous vote of the Land Use Commission, which, had it gone forward to council, would have failed. It's very rare for the council to turn around a 7 0 rejection. I don't see anything in this new proposal that's going to get you past Land Use Commission either. And if you don't get past them, you're probably not going to get past the uh, council either. So when I say you're going to abandon the project, you're going to abandon. I have not attended any of the other meetings. I just have one question due to something I read online. Uh, is there any regulation that would limit you or prohibit you from using this building, whatever, how many stories it ends up being, from being a 55 plus or some age limit, any part of it, to be a feeder into the Marion. You mean that would prevent us from doing so? Yes. I mean, we'd have to go through a PD process, just like we are with the current project. I'm not aware of anything you know, specific that would, present, that would prevent us from because using it as a 55 just plus. just what I read, one of your executives said, they had not yet made a determination about that. In terms of the, what the use will be of this building? Is that what you're of, asking? Of designating certain. Places. This is going to be a, no, this is going to be a market rate apartment. One of the previous iterations back in 2017, 18 was that it was going to be a 55 plus community of feeder to the legacy, but we've abandoned that okay. program. This is just thank a you. market rate. Okay, thank you. Well, with that, I think we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, I'm going to pass this to Councilmember Newsman, who will discuss where we what what the next steps are. Thank you, Councilmember Kelly, and I might need staff's help on the on the dates of the next steps in the process here. But what we had here tonight was actually a required part of the process. It's a new requirement to have a community meeting uh, for planned development such as this. Uh, in the past, this was not required. Many council members had these kind of meetings anyway. Uh, it is now a requirement, so we can at least check that box that we've met and had this community meeting. Uh, so the next step will be what, Kate? 
Uh, good evening. Uh, the next meeting will be a legally noticed public hearing with the Land Use Commission on March 8th at 7 o'clock p.m. That will be in council chambers downstairs. Um, so the nine member body and they'll meet and they'll make a recommendation to approve, approve with conditions or deny the application to the Planning Development Committee of the City Council. Um, if there is a continuance request submitted in writing um, during the meeting or prior to the meeting, the commission will consider that at that time and then they would announce a date certain for the public to attend a following meeting. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, the people, property owners or residents that live within 1,000 feet of the property in question should have, um, you would have received mailed notice. Um, there was a postcard that was sent out. So another one was mailed out or will be coming to you shortly regarding the public hearing part. That's the statutorily required part of the process. And then um, we did, we can also do a email blast again for the Land Use Commission. Um, some of you may have attended for the first time tonight if you received notice of this meeting um, in your ward newsletters. So question about the continuance. It's not automatic, but is there, what would happen if Jeff decides to request a continuance? The continuance then the Land Use Commission would um, just do a simple majority vote to grant or deny the continuance. If they were to deny it, they would need to take a vote to make their recommendation to the council that evening. If they granted the continuance, they would then have to say a date certain at the meeting and then everyone present at the meeting would know when to show up the next time. Which means they would say, this day, correct. This time, that there's no more continuance after that. Correct. Yes. And then after land use, the planning and development committee of the city council they meet. I believe the start time is uh, usually around six fifteen p.m. Um, prior to the city council meeting, the second and fourth Monday of the month, um, they'll do their recommendation to the full city council. The city council then immediately after in the same evening does a first reading of the draft ordinance and it's for introduction. And then two weeks later, the city council will then take make a final determination on the ordinance for the plan development. So, so the Lanks Commission votes on March 8th. Correct. Either way, yes or no, it comes to city council the first to planning and development. When would that be? The planning and development committee meeting would it be at the next one or it's usually there we'll see four weeks ish after the plan the land use commission meeting to um our deadlines internally are a couple weeks prior to the meeting to get meeting materials ready to go um so it would be about three to four weeks so if there's a calendar pulled up yes mm -hmm. yes and I'll update the website if you're able to see that. It's cityofevanston.org forward slash proposed projects right now, if that's the short link. And this project is at the top of the page, and I'm updating that with the meeting schedules as well. Right. So after land use, then to P&D. If it survives P&D, it goes to council for the first vote. And then would come, if it survives that first vote, would come back for the second vote. Planning Development Committee and the first city council vote are the same thing. Right. Okay. So I just want to thank all the residents who came out this evening to express your opinions and to weigh in. This is so important for council to hear from you. I also want to thank, thank Jeff you. Michael, Graham Grady, and Tim Kent. Thank you very much for coming this evening to um, present for our residents. Anything else, Councilmember Duzma? Home in time to see the kids before bedtime. So thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you.